Good evening and welcome everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you tonight on Mead Public Library's Facebook page, uh, coming to you live from Sheboygan, Wisconsin, in the upper Midwest. And uh, tonight is a very special class we've all been looking forward to. Um, this class uh, marks the end of uh, our, our whole, you know, almost nine, 10 months here since uh, the beginning of uh, the pandemic all the way on through. And uh, we've been meeting here almost every Monday night. And uh, this is going to be our last class for this year before we resume again uh, in 2021. We have a very special guest tonight. Um, Robert Remington has joined us and we're going to start out the class tonight with a, a little interview with Bob. Um, then we'll follow that with instruction on the coolest surf song you may have never heard before and uh, talk about the Torques, uh, a really wonderful surf group that recorded in uh, 1964, 1965 era. We're going to be learning the song Tidal Wave off this 45 record here. And uh, this is a great little little tune that's a lot of fun. Uh, we really enjoyed working on some earlier surf things like tequila and wipeout. And uh, tonight we'll uh, talk to Bob a little bit about the surf era and rock and roll in the mid 60s and uh, get his take on this as well. And then we'll go to work on learning this tune and uh, figuring out how to dress it up in a ukulele approach. Um, unless we have a you know, uh, a full band to do this with, we're going to have to take a ukulele approach to this song. So uh, good evening and welcome, Bob. Hi, how are you doing? So, Real yeah, good. I'm here, it's a, I'm here in a California under a palm tree. And, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> surfing all day. Actually, I'm uh, in the man cave in Sheboygan. <laughs> well, it's good to have you with us. And, uh, um, I want to tell all of the students out there that um, um, we could see a lot of wonderful things about Robert Remington. Um, you know, mostly what I want to say is that in addition to having this cool history as a member of a, a, um, a surf group, and uh, we'll talk to you a little later about how you can get the book if you're interested in reading more. Um, but in addition to having this cool history, um, Robert is at least to, to me and a few of the other musicians who perform around this part of the country, uh, one of the most supportive music fans you could ever hope for. It's obvious that this guy just loves music so much. And to all you ukulele players that are members of a ukulele club, uh, Robert is a member of the uh, Sheboygan Ukulele Club and uh, play, regularly plays U bass with the group. And so... Uh, um, He's just an all-around community uh, music lover and supporter, and so I'm so happy to have you with us. Um, Bob, why don't you start out by telling us have a, a couple of basic things about the group. How many people were in the group, uh, what year it started, and where you guys are uh, uh, were performing, what town? Okay, well, there were uh, five members of the original group uh, that formed in uh, 1960 in Lexington, Kentucky. And I was the original bass player for the group. There were two guitar players, a sax, an organ player, and a drummer. And uh, we were, at first we were uh, strictly an, an instrumental band, but we played uh, a lot of uh, songs like By the Ventures and Walk Don't Run and Hawaii Five-O and things like that. And if we, if we were, uh, were in California or even Sheboygan, we'd have been known as a surf band, but uh, there was no surf in Kentucky. So we were, we uh, just called ourselves a rock and roll band at that point. But uh, so that that's uh, pretty much, uh, well, the band actually uh, disbanded in uh, 1968, the original talk days. So yeah, 1968, that was the year I was born. <laughs> but uh, uh, listen, I love, uh, I love listening to uh, some of these takes that you guys made. It's really exciting music. Like, like you know, like all surf music is, is very exciting music and it captures uh, the energy of the era. Um, you know, we've, we, uh, we think of surf music in terms of songs like Walk, Don't Run, Tequila, 
pipeline and some of the other more classic uh, instrumentals that, um, you know, kind of made it into the pop consciousness of America. But, you know, there were tens of thousands of uh, surf hits and instrumentals that most folks never heard before. Uh, and often by bands that nobody had ever heard before, uh, like all good musical styles that spawn a revolution of, um, you know, of young kids who want to do this. And, and you guys were young, you know, I mean, and, uh, you know, you were right out of high school, right? You were in high school, you know, practically, right? I was a freshman in college, but the other uh, four guys were uh, seniors in high school. Yeah, so I mean, this is classic, man. You know, let's start a band in high school and let's let's do it because this music is great. You know, I I can feel that energy. And uh, um, what I love about the surf era is these melodies. You know, they get in your head. You know, and they stay there. And this is a tidal wave that we're going to work on tonight. Is a great example of this because it's a catchy little riff, and it's a hook. And it goes round and round and round. And then you find a whole bunch of different ways to, to, you know, deviate on the theme, if you will, improvise. Oh, uh, I'm looking forward to teaching this tonight, but uh, talk to us a little bit about what inspired the tune Tidal Wave? Well, uh, first of all, around 1961, uh, we we started listening to surf, uh, instrumental surf songs, and uh, our, a big influence was uh, Dick Dale and the Deltones. They they put out a song, one I remember is Let's Go Trippin', and uh, we discovered that we actually had the, the same instrumentation that they had. But even better, we had the same Fender equipment that they had, uh, especially the amplifiers. Now, it turns out that Dick Dale worked with uh, Leo Fender to come up with um, uh, an amplifier with a built-in reverb unit. And that reverb unit was kind of unique, and it gave what they called a wet surf sound. And we had that, and so that led us to uh, a uh, song like Tidal Wave, and you can hear the same sort of wet surf sound in, in songs like Pipeline, Wipeout. And so that was the big influence, was, to me anyway, was uh, Dick Dale, that, that more traditional instrumental surf stuff. Yeah, I first heard Dick Dale, uh, his version of Miser Lou, and, um, and that was a real classic for me. Um, but yeah, he represents, I think, a natural evolution of, um, of, of players who, were, who came to the fore in the late 50s. And so you had guys coming out of the, you know, rock and roll really coming into its own in the 1950s. And uh, a whole bunch of really good, good instrumental players. Um, you know, the class, the earliest classics being Chet Atkins and Les Paul and people like that. But as we move into the rock and roll realm, there were many players that bridged the gap that a lot of folks have forgotten about, like Link Ray. And, and then there were more country flavored players like Hank Garland and uh, a few others who were um, Dwayne Eddy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people who were recording really cool things that weren't called surf music, but they were just pre-surf music, you know, and um, everybody was looking for that neat sound and playing with uh, trying to get a different tone. So so it's, you're right on the money with the reverb, you know, and I got my you, you really won't hear it too much tonight because I don't want it to distort out through the mic. But, you know, I got my reverb set on my little amp here in the room. And uh, um, and when you when we play this music live, we always lean into that reverb and the tremolo and some other things that really uh, built the sound of this this music. Um, I want to add, um, Robert, that um, while surf music tended to be a guitar centric type of music, ukulele was certainly part of that culture because um, 
it first of all was used to market surf music and uh it was simply part of that whole beach culture that uh you know uh, the beach boys capitalized on and a lot of others even though you didn't actually hear uke in uh you know too much of the music dick dale interestingly is a ukulele player a lot of people don't know that um so so it's definitely there and um uh, so tell us a little bit about uh um what your gigs were like what kind of places did you play at well we played uh for fraternity parties uh proms uh nightclubs and even uh television shows what I, what I really remember is, uh, uh, turns out each town had uh, sort of a uh, American bandstand type of setup. And in Lexington, uh, Nick Clooney uh, had a, a Saturday morning dance party show that, that we played on. And turns out Nick Clooney is uh, uh, George Clooney's dad. So we got a lot of mileage out of that one. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, being being uh, Lexington, being horse country, we were uh, lucky that we were able to play in several uh, extravagant, well-paid um, horse farm parties. Uh, we even played uh, at the Brown Hotel in Louisville after the Kentucky Derbies. So that was pretty much, we played uh, all over Kentucky, uh, southern Ohio, and uh, southern Indiana. That, that was our range anyway and uh, where did you guys record uh um uh your uh tidal wave uh 45. well the tidal wave was recorded i believe in manchester uh, we we'd recorded uh before that four instrumentals in uh, owen bradley studios in nashville the same studio that elvis presley bobby Dylan, and, and some other folks recorded that and but um they, we didn't call them surf songs, but they actually had that, that surf sound. Uh, but the, well, it seemed like it was the right time to record a surf song uh, in the Torquays recorded in the well, beginning of 1965. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the British invasion happened in 19, late 1964 and kind of uh, had a negative impact on on the surf music uh, we, we were able to survive since we had singers by 1963 we could do all the rock and roll stuff uh, vocals and and instrumentals so, well, that sounds like it was just such a good time and yeah. uh, um and after um after the band broke up and that did, did you continue to play music off and on or what happened with your music after that my music or the, the torquees actually reformed uh in 19 uh, a group 1997 and uh, they're still going today they they play a few gigs uh each year around lexington but i i just sort of uh, played in uh, a folk group during that same time called the villagers which Pat Horrein, who turned out to be uh, a member of the Kingston Trio. So I, I kept playing, I uh, played in a big band, I played in a German band, I played in England, I played in a more of a country band. And, but the Torquays carried on. They sort of drifted away from the surf music more into the uh, British and, uh, and the psychedelic stuff, which I lost interest in. Uh, and uh, um, uh, one of our um, one of our one of your big fans here in Sheboygan um, asked wanted to know uh, Mike Ammons, who's a great musician in Sheboygan. He wanted to know what your role was in writing um, writing songs or writing music. Did you play a role in uh, writing any of the songs like Tidal Wave? Well, uh, the one. Uh... Well, four instrumentals that we recorded in Nashville, uh, we really all uh, took part. I, I had some influence in terms of the theme of the song, but um, the organ player would uh, go along with that theme and the saxophone player. We never had anything written down, it was just uh, sort of humming to each other. And then uh, and, uh, every member of the band had, 
have some uh, influence on what what we're going to do. That's great. It sounds like a good real democracy. And um, if people want to get more of an in depth um, look at, at at the band and read about them, is this book available for other people? Well, so I'm I'm planning to put a copy of it in the read library so people can learn more about the band. And uh, you know that that's pretty much the the best best way to go. It, the author interviewed uh, 18 uh, present and former um, Torte band members and came up with some, there's some really uh, interesting stories in there. So it's, it's worth a read. Okay, so if, if folks aren't local in Sheboygan, they wanna get a copy of it, maybe they could uh, met, f get, uh, reach you through me or how, uh, is it available on you know Amazon or maybe they could, um, you know, find out if they're really interested in getting a copy. Are there still copies available to uh, somebody could uh, get get a hold of if they live out of the area? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll um, get together with you. I, there's a bookstore uh, in Kentucky, a great big bookstore, in fact, where we had a book signing there. Uh, they probably have some copies, but I didn't find it on Amazon. I did find a copy on eBay. Found a copy of a uh, Title wave on eBay if you want to pay fifty bucks for it. <laughs> well, uh, um, just as a reminder, on the Google Drive, everybody, um, Bob posted. Uh, in addition to my transcription and arrangement of the song, uh, we're going to get to in just a few minutes now. Um, is also the, an audio MP3 that we are playing at the front end of the class, and um, uh, also a video. Um, file there as well so you make sure that you listen to the song because uh, what we're going to do tonight is going to be a lot of fun but it doesn't do justice to the excitement that's on the record that you hear with a whole band playing this piece like a lot of the surf tunes and so my approach to surf music is that we can take some things that are inherent uh, in the ukulele's repertoire and really make um a surf song come alive by virtue of triplets and chunking and muting and doing some things that would allow you to pull this off as a solo uke player. Um, however, the music just begs to be played with other people. And so I've taken some real liberties here tonight as we often do when we're arranging a piece of music and, and I don't have an organ or a horn or a guitar and a bass and all this other stuff. So we, we've really br broke it down uh, to its basic, basic elements and uh, we're gonna have some fun playing with it here tonight. Um, I wanna ask you, Bob, before we say goodbye and we start looking at this song, uh, is there anything that we, we missed about uh, in, in the interview here thus far, um, there was, you know, it was really an incredible time for music. And as a music historian, I think that that 64, 65 era saw a coming together of so many different styles of music beginning to just meld and bend and explode. And, and, and just, it was such an exciting time from the surf to the Beatles, to the blues, um, to the folk revival, to, you know, later Woodstock, to Jimi Hendrix, to, you know, all this great music that was coming alive in the 60s. What a great time to be um, interested in music, you know? Looking back at that, w w you have any thoughts about uh, what was just, what really moved you about that era? What, what really drew you in? Well, I, I just think uh, the, uh, the sound of uh, the guitars and the bass and the organ and just the way everything came together, uh, especially at the end of uh, 63, 64. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't end up uh, as a whole, we didn't end up as a, uh, sort of a Billboard Top 40 band, but uh, as individuals, we, we made it all right. Uh, we became, there's a, a, a neurosurgeon, uh, an architect, a lawyer, a highway commissioner, uh, a member of the Kingston Trio, and an aerospace engineer. So uh, whereas 
we uh, didn't make it big in the, in the music. We, we ended up okay. You guys all did all right for yourself. Uh, there's a bumper sticker that, that you'll sometimes see on cars, and it says, real musicians have day jobs. <laughs> now, don't, so you, don't quit your day job. Yeah, don't quit your day job. So you guys all did really well for yourself. And, uh, uh, boy, it's just been really fun talking with you. And uh, um, I want to say one last thing before we say goodbye here. And that is, there's a really cool picture of you with a guitar in your hand, serenading your girlfriend in college. And and I want you to, I just want to hear you say it. You started playing surf music because because the girls loved guys who played guitar and played music. So uh, you can't fool me, Bob Remington. Yeah, you know, she wasn't just my sweetie. She was my wife for uh, 40 something years. So. And uh... Yes. So anyway, I think we all should uh, give you a big thanks for putting this together. I know it's a lot of hard work and uh, we'll enjoy uh, learning the song from you. Thank you, Bob. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll see you at another time. And uh, thank you for sharing all this great history and helping create this cool t tune that we're going to learn tonight. Okay. So uh, at this time, I guess Bob will sign, sign off, uh, mute his video, and, uh, and I'll take over the teaching part of the, of the evening here. Thank you again, Bob. All right, everybody. Thank you, guys. And uh, let's get started with the music here. Um, we will uh, look at the, the pages that I that I gave out uh, in the Google Drive, and um, so we're gonna break this song down, and we're gonna talk about what really makes it cool and interesting, piece by piece. And um, again, I want to remind you that um, this is not a note for note transcription. I've never been a note for note guy. I just go for the feel of the tune, and. And again, without a, a drums and bass and all that other stuff, we got to do the best we can. Okay. So if you listen to the recording, you hear the drums start off playing a really syncopated intro. That syncopated intro will be very hard to copy rhythmically when you're teaching all levels at once. And so um, I recommend a basic muted intro. And and what I wrote wrote out for for the intro is just um using the calypso strum so i'm covering up the strings and i'm doing i don't know about two measures of um down down up up down up down down up up down up okay so that's going to be my variation on the on the really cool drum intro okay and that's just a down down up up down up down down up up down up. by the way i want to tell everybody that when i wrote out this arrangement i called bob and i asked him if he would um give me his blessing and i played uh what i had worked out for this tune to make sure that uh it sounded good and it sounded right and it met with you know a founding member of this group's approval you know because when you're arranging something you take a lot of liberties and so um, again, I'm covering up the strings and that's a calypso strum. So it's down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Okay. Down, down, up. And then there's a little breath. That's a syncopation down, down, up, up, down, up. Okay. It's almost like you're breathing in after the down, down, up. Okay. And there's a little breath and then up, down, up. Okay, so that's going to be our intro, and that's important too, even though it's a very short part of the song. And then on the record, after this drum intro, you hear the guitarist doing this. This, this like heavy on the downbeat rock and roll uh, muted strum. And that's pretty cool too, but I don't think it's a necessary part of what we're going to do tonight. Okay, so so we got down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. And that would be our intro. And then I think it's pretty cool to just go into the um, the, the strumming of the chords and the oohs. And so there's no words on this. It's just ooh. 
which is a classic 1960s, you know, phrase to say, ooh, all right? There are a lot of songs. If you took all the oohs out of every Beatles song, uh, you'd be hard pressed to, uh, you know, to call it, <laughs> call it a tune anymore because there are plenty of them. Okay, so you got G and F are the backbone of this song, G and F, okay? So after you get your intro, times Ooh. one more Ooh. okay so that's pretty easy right uh, you know anybody can do that going from the G to the F is very cool typically a one four five would be G C and D but in this tune, we go from G to F. Now, what other tune that's a classic surf tune does that as well? Okay. Okay. You know that one, right? Tequila. So um, that's another one. And maybe, you know, Maybe that inspired this tune. And uh, um, and so you got, ooh, do it again with me now, three more times. Ooh, G to F, two more times. G, F, G, one more time. G, F, G, yeah. And then after it does that a bunch of times, right? And when you're making, if you're going to play this arrangement and this tune, um, you know, it's really going to come alive if you can play it with one or two other people. Just get some other rhythm going, especially if somebody's an improviser, okay? Because this song is ripe for improvisation. And so you start out and you do that, that main ooh and the G to F a bunch of times, two times, four times. That's a good place to start after you do. Right, a lot of repetition here. I want this to sink in. Okay, then you come to uh, uh, you come to the main head. Okay, and um, you'll hear the horn play this, the, the saxophone play this. You'll hear the organ play this, and you'll hear the guitar player play this. And so they all take turns playing this head or the main riff, the hook that we're now going to learn. They each play it and then they do some variations. OK, and and so we're about to get into that. But another thing that happens on this is that in between the oohs, Right? There's little riffs and, and little bluesy type of uh, rock little fills and stuff. And the guitar player will do it, and the horn will do it, and the organ will do it. And so I'm going to teach you a cool bluesy scale that you can use to, to kind of come up with some of that. And I'll play some things that aren't on the record that, that I would do, you know, uh, if I was jamming this with a bunch of other people, okay? Um, and so... And then variations on how to play the melody. So here's the main riff. Now we're going to look at um, we're going to look at uh, the second page of the packet there that I that I gave you, and it says main head signature riff uh, on the page. Okay, and here's what we have tabbed out. Okay, there's two ways to do this. One I wrote down, one I did not. Okay, but there's lots of ways to do this. And so you're going to go. Yeah, we're I wrote it out so you could stay on one string. All right, that's easy. All right, so three, that's the first part of the riff. Three, five, six, five, three. Three, five, six, five, three. Okay, quarter note, eighth note. Okay, okay, that's the first part. All right, and I'm using my thumb and I'm picking down beats. Okay, all right, and then you're going to play the same same kind of phrase but you're going to move your finger up to the first fret and go 
And I like to double up that ending note. And I'll tell you what I'm doing with these little glissando things that I'm adding in there too. These kind of rock guitar, that kind of stuff in just a moment. Okay, so place your finger on the third fret of the E string and, and I, my index finger. Okay, and I'm going to go three, five, six, five, three, and then one, three, five, three, one. Okay. And again, you can just play that last note once or you can play it a bunch of times to keep the time and to fill the space because we don't have drums and sax and guitar and all that other stuff. So we might add some extra notes in our arrangement just to fill the space and to keep the meter. Um, otherwise, it falls apart, right? Okay, let's do it again. Here we go. Okay, one more time. again now let's do a call and response I do the riff then you do the riff okay you do it now good good job okay I do it you do it okay you do it Awesome. You guys are sounding good. Okay, one more time. Okay. In a little bit, we'll talk about, because that's a very cool riff, but it's very repetitive, there are things we're going to want to explore to create some variety so that it doesn't sound too monotonous. And it's a very cool little riff. It's bluesy, right? It's got that flat in third. In there so you start out on g and then you go to a okay g a b b is the third in this case right in the third in the g major scale you flatten it you get that b flat in there that gives you that bluesy sound right okay you can also do tremolo with this so if i use my thumb and i'm using the edge of my nail and I'm, and I'm using my finger to support my thumb. A lot of surf music. Listen to the guitar. There's a lot of tremolo, right? Um, uh, in the beginning of Wipeout, you hear what? Right? That's all like tremolo-y type of stuff. And you hear it a lot in surf music. So it's fun to employ a little bit of tremolo. Now, do you have to use your thumb? No. You can use the tip of your finger too. Okay. So that's a variation on the main riff of the song. Okay. So again, let's look at what we have so far. Um, we want to keep building up on top of each other, the layers, right? So you have... Maybe four times, let's say. Ooh. One more. Ooh. I think on the record they did it two times. The oohs were sung twice. But we need all the help we can get in terms if we're going to do this as a solo arrangement. So that's a prominent feature in the tune. So we're going to sing it you know, at our, at our discretion, two to four times. And then we're going to, we're going to go into the riff, right? We're going to go. And you got to remember because they're trading off between the horn, organ and guitar and each one's adding their own flavor. Um, you know, what we do is we might maybe do tremolo. Okay. Or 
dub, you know, double or triple up and create some variations. Or instead of playing the riff, go to the rhythm. Add a triplet strum, zigzag. Can you hear the ooze in there? I'm also adding chunking, which we talked a little bit about. Um, one and two and three and four. That's where my nails strike the strings and the fleshy part of my thumb cuts off the ringing of the chord or the notes uh, and that creates that popping one and two and three and four so every every time we get on uh, on that strum one and two and three and four one and two and three and four we're striking the chunk on the two and the four this is just rhythmic variation that's all that it is to add triplets and you know how to do them so what did i just do there is that little turnaround if you look on the page that i gave you it says little rev super simple two string g blue scale pattern so if we if we learn the G blue scale on two strings, which I really like because it simplifies things, um, we put one finger on the third fret, one on the sixth fret, okay, of the E string, and then so we go. So we got three six. Then we go over to the A string, and we got three four five, which is C C sharp D, and then we got to add two more notes in there. And that's the eighth fret and the tenth fret. So I did a little fill for those of you going to go back and watch this again. So I'm just playing, I'm just riffing on that scale. Okay, watch. There's a little rev riff. Five, four, three, six, three. So I go from six on E to three on A. And that's a little fill. And you're going to hear lots of little fills on that record. Okay including one I'm about to teach you that's kind of a ripoff of what the guitar player does, okay? Because they're all going to take turns playing solos on that theme, all right? So, so again, we have... Two to four times. Let's do two more times. One more time. Ooh. Now the riff, two times. Now occasionally, when I come to the end of a phrase, you hear me go, and that's a guitar. That's a thing that a lot of guitar players do, right? This little slide, little gliss, right? So I'll strike the string randomly after I get them playing the riff. And I do that to just sort of keep time and rhythm and keep the measures equal. It, it, it's filling in things to keep it, uh, the, the rhythm and the count in my head going. So I strike it at maybe the third fret, and then I just slot let my finger slide up the neck a little bit. Okay, 
you've often heard guitar players like Joe Satriani, uh, Ingve Malstein, Steve Vai, Jimmy uh, Page, Jimi Hendrix, you know, all these great hotshot guitar players and they make their guitars talk, BB King, right? Same thing. Okay, so, so now we've got the intro, we've got the ooze, we've got a few things we can add to it, chunking, tremolo, triplets, um, we've got the main head, and, and now the question is, what do we do now? Okay, well, if you're an improviser, then you would add a solo to this, and, and somebody would have to be going. If you got a looping pedal, you could put this rhythm down and then press the pedal or have someone play this or if you're crazy like little rev you go from strumming to single string lead stuff even when there's no rhythm okay and uh, and but what would you what do you do then what what would a solo consist of a solo if you record yourself going G to F we haven't fun yet Record yourself on your smartphone doing that. And then take that blue scale and, and play around with those notes. You know, play your, uh, your tonic note, your G. Listen to how the chords change and what sounds good. And you'll come up with some phrases and riffs of your own. Okay, you've also got things like your Chuck Berry type bends and riffs. One finger on the fifth fret of the uh, A string and uh, the eighth fret of the E string. Put three fingers down, press up, bend it, and you got classic rock bends. So I push the string up towards my chin and then I strike the A string fretted to a D. So that's a cool classic kind of riffing type of rock thing that you could do. Um, another thing that you could do is you could go up the neck onto the 10th fret. So I'm barring the E and the A strings. This is another kind of classic rock thing that you could throw in here. And I'm gonna slide from the ninth to the 10th. But I'm gonna follow the chord progression G to F. Or so you can play around with that. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 10, 10, 10, 10, and I'm barring the A and the E string, but I'm doing heavy downbeats, right? That's what rock and roll is, heavy on the downbeat. Remember, original rock strum is 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So if I'm playing an A chord, and 2 and 3 and 4, down, 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 down. Right? So you want to be good at those downbeats when you're arranging and studying rock and roll. All right. And, uh, and that's going to help you play those kind of melodic phrases with a stronger downbeat. Okay. Or. Okay. Uh, but that blue scale is going to work just great. If you listen to the guitar player on this 45 record, okay, there it is right there, right? And for that matter, a lot of surf music, okay? There's the, one of the best books you want to read on the history of surf music, okay? Surf Beat. Get it from your local library or order it on Amazon. All right. If you listen to enough surf music, um, you'll hear a lot of influence of the blues. And so 
you know, yeah, pentatonic comes into play, but um, that bluesy, rocky type stuff really sounds good, you know. So play along with what I wrote out um, as uh, the uh, little rev super simple two string blues uh, blues scale pattern and. and You want to get going real fast then use your your thumb but don't get too carried away because surf music was about its simplicity and that's what really makes it memorable is because they're in a million notes it's very ensemble playing music and um i'm sure there's some examples of uh a note noty tunes but these are tunes that are fun to play and easy to play because they are um attainable by most musicians okay that's why this music is so accessible all right so mess around with your blue scale i included another little riff it's called little rev super simple uh pentatonic g run right so so maybe i'd go i'd go one more time so that's a little phrase that I like to throw into a lot of surf songs. I think I learned it off of a surf record originally. And uh, it's just a G run. That's all it is. It's classic, right? I, I take my pinky, slide up to the 10th fret, seven, five, three, or 10, seven, five. And that's 10, seven, five. Then we go to the E string seven five three twice oh, i threw a glissando in there too Okay, fun stuff. I mean, really fun stuff. You could do full chord tremolos too. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Thank you, Robert Remington. Ooh, 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 ooh. Thank you to the Core Case for creating this cool song. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. Now, the guitarists, we're doing good. We got 10 more minutes yet. Okay, the guitarist takes the solo that jumped off the record for me. All right, I like what the horn player did, and does, you know does when you listen to the record. I like what the organ player did too, um, but I like what the guitar player did. It was understated. It was tasteful. It was good rock with a blues influence uh, sound. And so um, on my page here that I wrote out for this instruction the guitar ripoff riff with bends okay guitar ripoff again this is not note for note this is just the feel of, of what you'll hear if you listen to the record and how to do it okay so um what i want you to do is i want you to play three six three on the e string and then there's a little rest there so three six three that's g b flat g Okay, and then once you got that, I want you to place three fingers down onto the E string at the sixth fret, another finger on the seventh, and your pinky on the eighth. Okay, I'm gonna have my index on the A, A string at the fifth fret to anchor it. I'm going to strike the E string and push it up towards my chin for a whole step. Okay, so practice that a bunch of times if you've never done it. This is 
bending a string. And there are so many different variations we can do with this. The main thing is that you just get this sound, okay? If you can go, you could do that indefinitely and it sounds good when played with. Okay, so how do you get that bend? Okay, again, I position three fingers on the E string at, from six, seven, and eight. They're all resting on the fretboard. And then my index is at the fifth. That's a D note there. And that's just to anchor it. I strike the E string and I push with all three fingers that string up. Gives it a bluesy sound, right? Okay. And you don't have to adhere to what I wrote out here. You can, you know, again, if you record yourself playing G to F, you'll have something to see how it sounds with. And, um, and so just record yourself going over and over again. Then you can sit there and go and play with other notes. That's, uh, Generic phrase would be something like this. So you go. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, and then I'm just going eight, six, three, one, and coming back to the three, our root tone, right? So if you worked on building that up, that could make a cool riff too, right there. All right, so start it out slow. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, and that would make a nice cool riff right there. Sounds really nice when that rhythm is just right there next to you if you go to do those solos, okay? Um, there's one more little piece to this that's, that, will, that makes it very interesting, okay? And that is because there's a lot of repetition. Now, when you got a big full band like the Torquays were, okay, take a look. You know, there were a lot of them, okay? You can, you know, just the sheer fact that all these other instruments, they're all playing uh, their parts and there's little variations. And so that creates a lot of interest. But when you have a song that by and large revolves around two chords, um, to keep it interesting, especially if you're going to do it on the ukulele, um, it was classic part of the surf era would be to modulate, you know, for that matter, country. Johnny Cash did it all the time, right? So if we were playing G to F, then we're going to want and we're going to modulate up, which is typically uh, the standard is to go up rather than down. Now that would mean we would play A, and I like to play my A as a form of a G shape on the fourth fret. Okay? Or but you could play A up here like I've written on the chart. Okay? Um, but I like to play my A like that. So you got A to G and back to A, and that's where that that's where you can create a variation for yourself because you after you get done going, you know, 50 times going. Then you could go. You just went up a whole step. But how do you? 
how do you play the riff then? Okay, you just learned it in G. So for my intermediate and advanced students, you might want to modulate because it's more challenging for you. Um, for my beginning and advanced beginners, you just stay, you might, might not want to do this. But for those who want the added challenge in these last couple minutes, um, you would go from A to G. And I wrote out the riff at the bottom of the page there. And we're going to go 5, 7, 8, 7, 5. So we got 5, 7, 8, 7, 5. Then we go to 3. If I was going to play this live, and I hope to begin playing this when COVID is over, um, around Sheboygan and, you know, places with some of my musician friends around town, to keep it interesting, I would like to go hip, right? And that's going to mean we're going to modulate up to, a, a you know, one whole step up, right? So then we get into that A. Okay, so our blues um, rip notes are going to be five on E, eight on E, five on A. Um, and there, my, my band on seven on the A string and 10 on the E string. There's that Chuck Berry. Okay, that could be thrown in there as an idea for soloing. Okay, but you have your blues notes right there. So do it again. And it's in your notes to go from A, G, A, a bunch of times, right? And uh, yeah, and then it just keeps going until it until it can't go no more, you know. And then finally, you get that's not on the record, but that was classic rock. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we want to thank Robert Remington for taking the time tonight to uh, allow us to interview him, and uh, um, I want to thank Mead Library for. Um, you know, count the months. We've been doing this since March. The you know, first couple of months, it was twice a week. And uh, then we moved to just Monday nights. And so we've all been together for what I like to feel is like almost a year. And we become friends and family. We are uh, all over the world, but uh, we're uh, keeping each other's spirits up and improving our ukulele playing. And so it's been a, uh, a pleasure to be a part of your Ohana. And uh, I thank Mead Library for their beautiful support of uh, uh, a community learning and uh, international learning online. So thank to them for helping to be a sponsor of this. And uh, um, as always, if you enjoyed, um, you know, what you've been learning in these classes, please consider a tip. Um, it, the information's there in the thread, lilrev at lilrev.com via PayPal. And uh, it's important you know that um, after tonight, we'll be, we won't be back until the middle of January on the 18th. I posted the class roster for January, and uh, we got a whole bunch of good things coming up in January to study and to learn and a lot of new stuff in 2021, as well as a little bit of review, too, for those of you who want it. Okay, so uh, that'll be coming up. I'll visit lilrev.com. Uh, many ukulele albums and books and things like that. And uh, um, your support is always appreciated. And so uh, until we meet again, uh, I look forward to seeing you. When we do, thank you once again to everybody. Thank you to Robert Remington. Thank you to my wife, Jenna, who uh, um, does so much behind the scenes stuff that you guys don't see. 
uh, but she really uh, keeps me afloat. And so uh, uh, blessings to her and all of you. I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy. And uh, God bless all of you. And uh, um, I love you like a ukulele. I'll see you again. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.